the time I found a real red room on the dark web by Reddit user Droden. This story goes way back to 2006, but I remember it like it was yesterday. When I was 16, I had a really good friend a year younger who was deep into coding. I met him years earlier in a computer club in middle school, and he had been integral in me becoming tech literate over time. The guy knew three coding languages by heart in his 7th grade. Anyways, he ends up telling me about Tor and all that while we were chatting with some friends in IRC after school. Some of the older guys had some really interesting stories and I, of course, dug real deep into them all. It didn't take long for me to download Tor and start looking up onion links. My first couple of weeks were spent clicking around just trying to go deeper and find different things. I was saving all the good links I could find in a note card. I found various things like dark web search engine, something similar to a hidden wiki, a few conspiracy sites, the usual drug stuff, porn I wanted to be nowhere near, and even a hitman forum. The thing that made me uninstall tour came about two and a half weeks into using it almost religiously after school. I had stumbled on a forum, probably something along the lines of think evil forums or some crap. It was behind a wall of about four or five different forums linking deeper and deeper. All of the banter was about really dark topics. Raping, torture, long-term abuse tactics, cannibalism, you name it. As with anything on the dark web, most of the posts were either weeks old or months old. There were a few sub-forums that were more active than others. However, when looking at the main page and seeing which post had the most recent, there was something posted within the last hour. It was a link. Red room going live soon. Onion jargon here. Dot onion. At this point, I was hit with a wave of emotion like none I had ever felt before. I was washed over with a wave of ice, frozen in my seat. There was a looming terror of what it could mean. I had only heard a couple things about red rooms before coming upon this. Only the most potent of teenage curiosity fueled my finger to copy and paste the link. What I saw is exactly what had been described by other accounts that had posted. As such, bringing up the more gory, no sleep bits is a bit hard for me to think about, let alone write. Details will be omitted. It was a live webcam chat room. Inside what looked to be an abandoned house was a person sitting on a chair sobbing with a pillowcase covering their body and someone else moving stuff around. The person moving around was the admin of the chat session, and he came closer to the camera and uncovered the woman as she jumped in terror from the act alone. A woman, duct tape on her face, and a man with a black t-shirt over his head or something similar. After welcoming people to the show, as the woman cried, he asked in type what the crowd wanted to see and how much they'd pay to see it. I just remember being sat there in sheer terror half trying to figure out how to help this lady and half completely frozen stiff. The details are still a bit blurry so even if I wanted to add them, it's difficult to. However, someone offered $500 for something along the lines of beating the woman with a baseball bat. I think I started crying and to be completely honest, remembering it this much is about to bring me to tears again. The screams haunt me. The man who paid $500 for that asked the admin to end her with a knife immediately. Someone had then asked me why I wasn't talking in the IRC. I pulled the plug on my computer and then called my friend. I had told him what happened and all he said was, you've probably just been reading too many stories and fell asleep at the computer and had a nightmare. Because of all the stories that float around about the dark web, no one ever believes this story. Yet it happened. Every time it comes back in my mind, I pray that it was just a snuff film with a bad budget, but the screams and blood were all too real for that. Please stay away from the deep web by Reddit user The Damaged. I had always been aware of the deep web. You hear the craziest, most fucked up stories about people who have the balls to explore it. Websites that involve human experimentation, hiring a hitman, and even watching people through their own security cameras. It's fucked up, but honestly, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't just slightly interested. Now, just to point out, there was no malicious intent behind my exploration of the deep web. 
I was just curious to see if it really was as bad as people said it was. The first thing I stumbled upon was a website extremely centered around death, which gave me a really uneasy feeling. I didn't hang around that webpage very long. It takes quite a bit to freak me out, so it's safe to say that I was a little surprised that I couldn't even stomach the first website I clicked on. But hey, it's not supposed to be all unicorns and rainbows, right? Next I clicked a website that was dedicated to watching people through security cameras. Most of the screens showed empty living rooms and patios. Some of them showed oddly filled rooms, like rooms that were packed with stuffed animals and another that was eerily decorated with fucking Christmas lights and fake Santa Claus statues. Another screen showed a young woman doing yoga. That one had a lot of views, and I didn't watch that one very long. Something inside me felt ill and just wrong, like what I was doing was just sickening. I shook my head, blinking away any more curiosity before I hovered my mouse over the tiny X to close the window. Right before I pressed the mouse, though, I saw a blue link under a black screen that said, Proceed with caution. I bit down on my back teeth, yelling internally to leave the page. Don't click the link. It's not worth it. I mean, it could be a murder, and that would make me an accomplice, wouldn't it? I mean, what if it was someone skinning an animal or some shit like that? But then again, what if it wasn't? I don't know what the hell propelled me to move my mouse away from the window, hovering over the link instead, but that's where I ended up. My curiosity always got the best of me, and no matter how twisted my stomach felt, or how strong the feeling of dread was that lingered right over my head, I had to know. I really just had to know what the link led to, or I would go crazy until I finally figured it out. So I pressed my mouse down and watched the link turn purple. Felt my mouth go dry and watched as the screen slowly loaded. The page was compromised of a large screen, like the security camera page, only it was just one. The room was concrete, and it was dark. There must have been a night vision camera or something because everything had a weird blue-green tinge, but you could tell that there was just little to no light. There was a dark liquid on the floor in a medium-sized puddle. I told myself it was gasoline. Don't ask me why. Movement in the far right corner of the screen caught my attention, and I immediately perked in my desk chair, inching my face closer to the screen of my laptop. It looked like an arm, like someone's forearm. They were standing there, not really moving but subtly swaying, just enough to not look completely still. Hey, I said before shaking my head and slapping my mouth shut. Stupid. Then the person walked, and they walked over towards the left of the screen. I felt my stomach knot, felt my throat tingle and tighten, bile rising in the back of my throat. I knew my mouth was open, gaping, and my eyes were wide. Face screwed up into an expression of pure disgust. It was a young woman. She looked like she couldn't be older than 25 or so. Long, dark, dirty hair was in tangles, like she'd been pulling at it. Her leg was dragging, and her other skinny leg doing most of the work as she limped weakly. Her head was down, looking at the floor, and the sound of her dragging her foot across the concrete echoed in my silent room. I didn't think it could get any worse. I was so, so fucking wrong. Suddenly, the woman raised her head, and it looked like it weighed a ton on her tiny body. I hadn't noticed it before, only able to barely make out her side profile, but now it was clear as day. She looked around eyes watering with tears and black makeup streaming down her face. Small strands of bloody thread were intertwined in her lips, messily tied, locking them together. Dark blood stained her chin, probably from where she tried desperately to open her mouth to scream, before realizing she couldn't. Her dainty fingers were stained as well, the same color as the puddle on the concrete. My whole body felt weak. My stomach was sick. I tried to tell myself that it was fake, that it was all a big hoax. My eyes scanned the bottom of the left screen. 5,623. 
5,623 people were watching. Unable to fight it any longer, I ran straight to the bathroom, puking my insides into the toilet bowl. Everything in me felt disgusting, wrong, twisted. Once I was finally done, I laid on the floor of the bathroom, letting the cool tiles try to soothe my burning body. My head was spinning. I kept repeating to myself over and over in my head that I shouldn't have clicked the link. I should have left. I should have closed the fucking window and told my inner curiosity to go fuck itself. Instead, I was lying on the floor, the bathroom reeking of vomit, and my mind a complete mess over what the hell I was supposed to do. Should I get the link and send it to the police? Should I call them now? My first instinct was to copy and paste the link just in case, then call the police and inform them of what was happening. Maybe they could trace the IP address or something. Maybe they would recognize the girl and know where to start looking. Maybe I could save her life. I'd feel really fucking dumb if this was all fake just to get viewers, but I wasn't about to gamble. Not worth what was at stake. I ignored the dizzy feeling flooding my head as I jumped up, grabbing the doorknob and twisting it a bit too harshly. When I flung the door open, my phone buzzed in my pocket, scaring the living shit out of me. I stopped mid-panicked and picked it up with my shaky hands. I saw my girlfriend's name and immediately slid to answer. My voice was a complete wreck, my eyes finding the screen where the girl shrunk down to the ground, the sound of her cries bouncing around the room, making my body feel rigid. I had nothing left to throw up, but I still felt so sick. Madeline, you're not going to believe what I just fucking saw, I told my girlfriend. And she responded, What, are you okay? Have you been crying? And I simply said, No, I'm not okay. Averting my eyes from the screen. I know you said to stay away from this deep web bull. She interrupting, Are you kidding me? Her voice went from caring to mad in a split second. I told you to stay away from that place. You never listen to me. You never fucking do. There's a girl, I said weakly. She's trapped in some basement or something. Her mouth is... She's... Her mouth is like sewn shut. There's blood all over her face and hands. I don't know what to do, Madeline. The woman's cries got louder, more desperate, but muffled. I'm so sorry. She told me to close it out and clear my history and never go back there again, and she wasn't kidding. But I should call, and she cut me off again, no. Her voice was stern now. You don't know if it's bullshit, it's probably staged to gain some disgusting viewers, apparently like yourself. People do it all the time, that's why I said it's best if you just stayed away from there. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble. I didn't say anything. Wordlessly walking over to my desk, my hand shook as I raised my mouse to the small X icon once more. My eyes watched the number of viewers slowly tick higher and higher. Before I closed the window, I felt even worse than before. I told Madeline, okay, and she told me that we could file a police report tomorrow, just in case, but for now to just go to sleep and stay the fuck away from the dark web. I didn't have the energy to argue with her. Guilt plagued my whole body, drowning me. It was all I could feel. I told her goodnight and that I was sorry that I loved her and before I hung up I made my way to the couch to sleep. Or try to sleep. It didn't feel right even being in my bedroom or being anywhere near my computer. Not while that girl was still trapped, unable to scream for help unable to talk at all. I know it could be fake, but was that really a risk I was willing to take? I looked up some Google searches over what was fake on the deep web, and read multiple stories about staged webcam videos, which made me feel a little bit better. It didn't make the sick, guilty feeling go away though. It's safe to say that I didn't get much sleep. Every time I closed my eyes or even begin to drift off, I would see the woman's face. The thread laced into her lips, blood staining her mouth, her fingers, the floor. 
I continued to grow more and more anxious and uneasy, deciding that maybe getting out of the house and heading over to the local CVS and picking up some melatonin might help. I threw my blanket off, slid on my shoes and grabbed my keys and wallet from the nightstand. The cool air felt amazing and did wonders to calm the whirlwind of thoughts in my head. I went to check the time, realizing I'd left my phone at home. Not a huge deal, the store was only a few minutes away from my house. I ended up buying melatonin and a stronger sleeping pill just in case those didn't work. I also got a pack of bottled water to help rehydrate after I vomited up all the contents in my stomach earlier. By the time I got home, I felt much better, which lasted about three seconds before I noticed that the front door was open. Now, I may have been in a state of shock and panic, but I never, never, ever leave my front door open or even unlocked for that matter. My heart immediately began to race. I got out of my car, closing the door quietly and unlocking my trunk, grabbing the crowbar that I keep in there. Who's there? I yelled into the house, waiting for any noise. I yelled again, who is in there? My own voice was shaking and weak. I was met with a complete silence. Keeping the crowbar up and ready to strike, I walked to the couch and felt for my phone. As soon as I found it, I hit the emergency button and waited until I got a hold of a 911 operator, letting her know that I think my house was just broken into. She told me that the police would be on their way. After checking around the house for anything odd, I decided to give my girlfriend a call, letting her know what happened. The phone rang, rang, and then rang some more. After going to her voicemail, I hung up, knowing she'd probably be asleep at this time of the night. I waited about 20 minutes or so until the police showed up, and walked around with them like a scared puppy as they checked every single room. They ended up just having me fill out a report and telling me that they'll keep patrol cars in the area just in case anyone else gets hit. As they were leaving, I checked to see if Madeline had called back yet, but there wasn't any missed calls. I, however, did notice several outgoing calls to her phone. Outgoing call to Madeline, 3.12 a.m. Outgoing call to Madeline, 3.14 a.m. Outgoing call to Madeline, 3.17 a.m. And outgoing call to Madeline, 3.20 a.m. And then another one at 3.56, which was around the time I'd gotten home. My mind went into automatic panic, knowing for a fact that I did not make those calls. I quickly checked my text, reading one I'd apparently sent out at 3.23 a.m. Hey, can't sleep. Gonna come over. Mind leaving the back door unlocked so I can get in? I didn't send that message. My stomach dropped. My heart thudded loudly in my chest as I noticed her reply directly underneath. Sorry, I was sleeping. Thanks for waking me up, by the way. Use your key again? It's unlocked. Don't be late. Without a second thought, I jumped up, running to lock all the doors and windows in my house, keeping the crowbar tight in my hand as I ran to my car. I drove as fast as my little Civic could allow, all the way to her house, ignoring any stoplights. It only took me three minutes to get there, but I still knew it'd be too late. I made my way to her back door, feeling every cell in my body burn when I saw it was wide open. My face was hot and my hands were shaking, but I stepped in. Crowbar raised like a bat, ready to swing. I tried to keep my emotions at bay as I looked around her dark house. Madeline, I called out. Are you okay, babe? There was nothing. Silence. I repeated. Madeline. A small scream came from her bedroom just upstairs. My legs jerked to a run as I flew up the stairs, slamming her door open. I looked at her empty bed, her empty room. Confused, I heard the scream again, only this time I heard that it was coming through her computer monitor. I felt numb as I looked at the screen, noticing the same website I saw earlier. Only this time, instead of one woman, I saw two. The first was lying on the floor, not moving, in that puddle of dark liquid. I recognized the second girl just as I had recognized her voice. 
My heart shattered as I saw her face, streaked in blood. The same threading was sewn into her eyelids, locking them shut. Her scream hit my bones, surrounded my body. It was all I could hear. Her face was twisted in pure terror. I cried pathetically as her voice began to go out, continuing to grow weaker and rasped. I locked my jaw, picking up my cell phone and dialing 911 for the second time. Only this time it barely rang once before the deep, gravelly voice of another man answered. You should not have called. Chills shot down my body, and I heard the phone thud as it hit the carpeted floor. My breath hitched in my throat as I bent to pick it up, hanging up the call and racing down the stairs. How did he do that? How did he redirect my call away from the police? I felt my heart race as I darted out of her back door in a frenzy as I sprinted to the closest house. I pounded on the door, screaming at the top of my lungs until the neighbor opened it. Her face tired, confused, and scared. She let me in and I explained through the frantic tears of what happened. I'm typing this on my phone to post as we both try to get a hold of the cops, but neither of our calls are going through, and neither is our landline. I think someone is messing with our cellular signal and they may have cut her line too, but we're going to keep trying. I'm scared for me, I'm scared for my girlfriend, and I'm scared for my neighbor. I don't know what's going to happen to me. If you don't hear from me again, please take this advice and this experience to heart. Stay away from the deep web. For fuck's sakes, please. Please. Stay. Away from the deep web. The time I found a real red room on the dark web. By Reddit user, Droden. This story goes way back to 2006, but I remember it like it was yesterday. When I was 16, I had a really good friend a year younger who was deep into coding. I met him years earlier in a computer club in middle school, and he had been integral in me becoming tech literate over time. The guy knew three coding languages by heart in his 7th grade. Anyways, he ends up telling me about Tor, and all that while we were chatting with some friends in IRC after school. Some of the older guys had some really interesting stories, and I, of course, dug real deep into them all. It didn't take long for me to download Tor and start looking up Onion Links. My first couple of weeks were spent clicking around, just trying to go deeper and find different things. I was saving all the good links I could find in a note card. I found various things like dark web search engine, something similar to a hidden wiki, a few conspiracy sites, the usual drug stuff, porn I wanted to be nowhere near, and even a hitman forum. The thing that made me uninstall Tor came about two and a half weeks into using it almost religiously after school. I had stumbled on a forum, probably something along the lines of Think Evil Forums or some crap. It was behind a wall of about four or five different forums linking deeper and deeper. All of the banter was about really dark topics, raping, torture, long-term abuse tactics, cannibalism, you name it. As with anything on the dark web, most of the posts were either weeks old or months old. There were a few sub forums that were more active than others, however, when looking at the main page and seeing which post had the most recent, there was something posted within the last hour. It was a link. Red room going live soon, onion jargon here dot onion. At this point I was hit with a wave of emotion like none I had ever felt before. I was washed over with a wave of ice, frozen in my seat. There was a looming terror of what it could mean. I had only heard a couple things about Red Rooms before coming upon this. Only the most potent of teenage curiosity fueled my finger to copy and paste the link. What I saw is exactly what had been described by other accounts that had posted. As such, bringing up the more gory, no sleep bits is a bit hard for me to think about, let alone write. Details will be admitted. It was a live webcam chat room. Inside what looked to be an abandoned house was a person sitting on a chair sobbing with a pillowcase covering their body and someone else moving stuff around. 
The person moving around was the admin of the chat session, and he came closer to the camera and uncovered the woman as she jumped in terror from the act alone. A woman, duct tape on her face, and a man with a black t-shirt over his head or something similar. After welcoming people to the show, as the woman cried, he asked in type what the crowd wanted to see and how much they'd pay to see it. I just remember being sat there in sheer terror, half trying to figure out how to help this lady and half completely frozen stiff. The details are still a bit blurry, so even if I wanted to add them, it's difficult to. However, someone offered $500 for something along the lines of beating the woman with a baseball bat. I think I started crying, and to be completely honest, remembering it this much is about to bring me to tears again. The screams haunt me. The man who paid $500 for that asked the admin to end her with a knife immediately. Someone had then asked me why I wasn't talking in the IRC. I pulled the plug on my computer and then called my friend. I had told him what happened, and all he said was, you've probably just been reading too many stories and fell asleep at the computer and had a nightmare. Because of all the stories that float around about the dark web, no one ever believes this story. Yet it happened. Every time it comes back in my mind, I pray that it was just a snuff film with a bad budget. But the screams and blood were all too real for that. I would like to thank you all for listening to my narrations. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, and if you would like to hear more narrations in the future, remember to subscribe and click the bell in order to be notified of the next time I upload. I really enjoy making these videos, and I'm learning as I go, so they may be a bit rough around the edges right now, but they will only get better. If you have any suggestions on how I can make these videos better, or any stories you would like to hear me narrate in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below.